Hi everybody, I'm Brittany Lewis, a breaking news reporter here at Forbes. Joining me now is staff writer, Zach Everson. Zach, thanks for coming on as always. My pleasure, Brittany. You just reported that Senator Lindsey Graham's legal expense trust fund has raised six figures since November. Before we get into who's donating, why does he need so much money for legal expenses? Um, so Lindsey Graham got called into subpoena. He was subpoenaed to testify in the uh, Fulton County District Attorney investigation into former President Trump and the allegations that he tried to overturn the election. Uh, Senator Graham fought the subpoena. It went all the way to the Supreme Court, took a couple months. And, uh, you know, that's going to require some lawyers and uh, lawyers aren't cheap. Are these legal bills unusually large, or is that a standard amount a politician typically faces, especially of Lindsey Graham's stature? Sure, it's it's much higher. You can see a big spike. So, so for example, Senator Graham paid um, it was two over two hundred thousand dollars, and uh, it was two hundred sixty-eight thousand to be precise, uh, in legal fees to one firm on on one day back in November at the end of November. And when you see a six-figure payout like that. It's usually indicative of an issue. Typically, you know, obviously they're working with lawyers regularly. Uh, it's smaller, you know, a few thousand here, a few thousand there. So if you start seeing a big expense like that, um, you know, something's up. And is this issue, you know, has it seen a resolution or is this going to be ongoing? Uh, well, I mean, obviously the district attorney's uh, investigation is ongoing. I believe some of that's uh, part of it slated to be released soon. Uh, in terms of Senator Graham's involvement in it, I don't know. Uh, that's not that's not public. Uh, he did test. He did end up testifying, though. So so that part has happened. So it is possible that his legal bills have peaked, but and we do don't know for sure yet. And do senators usually offset their legal bills with donations? Um, yes, yes. Members of Congress do. There's, there's not many examples of this in the Senate. Uh, the most recent one was Richard Burr. Who was an he was investigated by the Department of Justice for some uh, stock trades he made at the beginning of the pandemic. There were allegations of insider trading. Uh, he was ultimately not charged with anything, and he similarly had a uh, legal expense trust fund where most of the donors were were fellow senators. And you see this in the House a lot as well. There are probably seven or eight lawmakers there who have active um, legal expense trust funds at any given time. And how do donors feel about this? When you're donating, do you know that you're donating specifically to the legal expense trust fund? Or do you think, oh, I'm donating to this candidate? You know, that's an excellent question, Brittany. And that when you donate, you can donate directly to the legal expense trust fund. So that the people who were on the disclosure that I recently unearthed, they all knew what they were doing. But candidates are able to use political funds to pay for legal fees as long as the uh, the legal issue results from their official duties, something to do with them being in office. So it is quite possible that if you wrote a check for whatever candidate, gave that candidate you know, the donation, and then the candidate got in trouble, they could go ahead and use political funds to offset their legal fees. And let's talk about where these donations came from. They almost exclusively came from either lawmakers or executives of companies. So let's start with the executives. Who are they? Sure. Uh, Robert Castellani is one of them. You know, three of these three of them stood out in that they have um, really deep ties to the to the to the government. You know, one of them, uh, Robert Castellani, he's the CEO of North American Rescue. Uh, he donated ten thousand dollars, which is the max. His he uh, his company is a government contractor providing medical products, and it's done over one hundred million dollars in federal contracts. Um, one of the other ones, he chairs a. Um, company that works with immigration, helping to get foreign investors uh, permanent residency status in the U.S. And for this company to operate, it needs regular approval by uh, the Office of um, Immigration and, uh, and, civil, and, and Citizenship. So you know, these are places that definitely need government to be on their good side. And here they are. And this, this is all legal, you know, giving $10,000 to uh, Senator Graham's defense. You know, my, my favorite person I reached out to was, uh, and he's also the only person who responded, so it makes it easy to be the favorite. Um, he's uh, owned a um, casino development firm down in South Carolina. And when I asked him about, you know, why did you donate to, to Senator Graham's defense? His response was, I've worked with the senator for over a decade. I was happy to chip in. No surprise, of course he was. Do these executives have specific relationships aside from that one to Lindsey Graham, or is it a larger thing here of I want to donate to a lawmaker? 
You know, I, I asked them about that. I asked uh, Senator Graham's spokesperson about that. He didn't answer that part of the question, just said that Senator Graham complies with all rules and regulations. But a lot of the times when you look at people who've donated to legal trust funds for a candidate, they've also made political donations to that, that candidate as well. And these executives, as you said, they want government on their side. Are they donating more to Republicans or have they ever donated, to your knowledge, to Democrats as well? You know, I didn't look them up individually. Um, and right now, the legal, the only two active legal expense trust funds in the um, in the Senate are both for Republicans. Got it. And from what this looks like, are these good faith donations, or is it more of a case of I'll scratch your back now, you scratch my back when the time comes? Um, I mean, that's typically how government operates overall is the whole back scratching thing. I mean, do I think anything explicitly was stated? No. Um, you know, it's just they're supporting the senator who's been good to them. Um, you know, it's 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 just standard. It's business as usual, um, which is, you know, one of the little quirks we have with our political system. And what about lawmakers? Which lawmakers are donating? They are. Lawmakers in general are very happy to support their colleagues. Um, we saw this again with Senator Burr, where most or a lot of the, the donations to his legal expense came from other members of the Senate. It's likewise so far with uh, Senator Graham, where we have you know, most of the time they're not donating personal funds. That happened once, I believe, with Senator Burr. But they have leadership PACs, and it's the leadership PAC that's that's donating the money. So there were seven current Republican senators who maxed out with $10,000 contributions um, to Graham. And then you have a couple, three other ones who donated a little bit less. And you have a former Senator, Richard Shelby, his campaign, is his leadership pack is still active and that too donated uh, $10,000. And why are they so happy to support their colleagues? Well, none of them got back to me on this one. Uh, and that was the same case when I reached out about Burr with one exception. I, I can't remember which Senator got back to me, but the response was you know, these charges were false against Senator Burr and I was happy to support his defense. Um, you know, that's that's got to be one of the big issues here. You know, there's also might be a little uh, there, but for the grace of God, go I. And from a strategy's perspective, why support Lindsey Graham specifically? As a Republican, is it an especially good thing to have Lindsey Graham in your corner? Hey, you can't hurt. He's been one of the more influential members of the Senate for quite some time. Um, you know, he's been a little bit of uh, amorphous of late where he shifted from somebody who was more aligned with like John McCain types to somebody who's more aligned with Donald Trump. But he is, uh, you know, he's been he's been in the Senate for a while. He's a pretty powerful senator. So can't hurt. And back to these donations, what's the max you can contribute? It's ten thousand dollars in a year. And so I'm really interested to see what happens, you know, when we turn into 2024 and see if any of these candidates, any of these uh, donors are, are doubling up again on that. And are these lawmakers and executives hitting the max or only smaller sums? What are they donating? By and large, they're maxing out. There are a couple of Congress people who came in lower than that. Um, Shelley Moore Cap Capito of West Virginia came in at 8,000 and Kevin Kramer and Chuck Grassley came in at five. Um, $5,000, we saw that a little bit with Burr where people would donate half of what they could or sometimes they'd um, they'd split it up over two donations. Um, the $8,000 figure was kind of interesting. I, I don't know why that was the, the sum she chose, but um, that is what she did. And does Lindsey Graham have more to raise? Uh, if he wants to offset his legal bills so far, yes. Um, his campaign has spent $268,000. Uh, on attorney's fees to this to the firm that's representing him and his legal expense fund paid them directly as well as forty thousand dollars so that's over three hundred thousand dollars so he's about halfway there assuming he has no more legal fees which probably is not the case and what what they typically do is you know they'll they'll they're not going to go out of pocket on this they'll use campaign funds to pay for the legal fees and then they'll use the legal expense trust fund to reimburse the campaign and why is it probably not the case that he won't incur more legal fees? Oh, no, I, I think he very well may. Um, you know, it's, it's it's lawyers billing practices. It could take several, you know, it could take a little bit for things to work them work their way through. There's probably going to be some sort of residual stuff. Um, you know, I would imagine that as long as the district attorney's uh, investigation is active, that there'll probably be some, you know, involvement with uh, with Senator Graham's attorneys. Zach Everson, thank you so much. Pleasure.